dear friends in Christ, we welcome you to this Lenten devotion of the Stations of the Cross. May it be a time of quiet reflection and prayerful meditation. Let us pray. O merciful Saviour, grant that while we follow the blessed footsteps along this way of sorrow, our hearts may be so touched with true contrition that you may turn our weeping into gladness by giving us remission of all our sins. Amen. And we offer this devotion to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Eighth Station The women of Jerusalem mourn for our Lord. We adore thee, O Christ, and we bless thee, because by thy holy cross thou hast redeemed the world. A bruised and bloodied son, Mothers and daughters moved with compassion, openly mourn for Mary's son. Beating their breasts, with tears and loud wailing, the women lament the fate of the Son of Man. Yet Jesus' concern is for them and for their children in the days yet to come. Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but for yourselves and for your children. How are we to understand our Lord's words? Are there reproach to the women? I think not. Consistent with his nature, I believe that Jesus held genuine compassion for the women, even as they were moved to tears at his suffering. Here we see the interrelatedness of humanity. This mutuality of compassion also provides a challenge to us all. The women of Jerusalem did not join in the taunts and scoffings of the crowd. Instead, in the face of suffering, they mourned. They looked at Jesus and saw perhaps a son, a brother. They looked at him. They did not turn away and pretend as though nothing was wrong. What do we do on the other hand? How do we react to the sufferings of others? Do we close our eyes and pretend as though it isn't happening? Do we engage in empty piety which offers murmured words but unmoved hearts? The interaction between Jesus and the women casts a harsh light on such behavior. It is of little use to lament the pains and sufferings of persons if our lives go on as usual. My brothers and sisters, there is serious danger if despite all our expressed consternation at evil and innocent suffering, we are unwilling to put into action those measures that might bring some measure of relief. If we put our comfort and convenience above others, we have failed to join in the mutual compassion showed by Jesus and the women of Jerusalem. Furthermore, our Lord shows us that we have little excuse. There he stood, bloodied, weary, on his way to death. Yet his heart was moved for the women and their children. He saw the seriousness of our broken relationship with God and with each other. As we contemplate not only the sufferings of Jesus, but of the persons in our own communities, let us do all in our power to overcome the brokenness that leads to such pain. O God, we love thee with our whole hearts, and above all things, and are heartily sorry that we have offended thee. May we never offend thee any more. O may we love thee without ceasing, and make it our delight to do in all things thy most holy will. Let us pray. Teach your church, O Lord Christ, to mourn the sins of which it is guilty, and to repent and forsake them, that by your pardoning grace we may escape those judgments prepared for all those who reject you, and instead may be reconciled to you, who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. May the souls of the faithful, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we pray that these continued devotions may be a blessing to you all. Please join with us again as we continue to walk with Christ 